J. Robert Oppenheimer once famously said, Now I am death, destroyer of worlds, and he was right. But why? It's because he led a group of the world's top scientists during World War II to create the first atomic bomb. The power of this bomb was like nothing humankind had ever seen before. When these bombs were unleashed on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it demonstrated the world-crushing capabilities of the weapon. But how does an atomic bomb actually work? The bomb's origins are actually rooted in Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. This stated that energy is equivalent to mass times the speed of light squared. A simple way of breaking this down is that there is an equivalence between mass and energy. If you could change some matter rapidly into energy, then you could harness that energy in a nuclear reactor, or as Oppenheimer's team did, seal it inside a bomb ready to cause devastation. The problem that the Manhattan Project had when developing the atomic bomb is that they needed a certain kind of uranium. Most uranium is the kind with isotope 238. In fact, around 99% of the world's uranium has this property. The issue with this is that it's not as volatile as its very rare cousin, uranium-235. Oppenheimer's team needed to be creative and manipulate the uranium they had to separate the material they needed for a massive reaction from uranium ore. The team used several methods to achieve this result, known as uranium enrichment, which included centrifuges, gaseous diffusion, thermal diffusion, and electromagnetic separation. But how did the bombs actually detonate? Although many tests of nuclear bombs have been conducted, there's only ever been two A-bombs set off on an enemy. These were the two that were dropped by the U.S. on Japan to end the Second World War. Although the two bombs had similar reactions that we've already explored, their method of detonation was very different. The first bomb was called Little Boy. This was the one dropped on Hiroshima that was responsible for at least 70,000 deaths. The bomb had two separate pieces of uranium, neither of which was big enough to achieve critical mass. These pieces were kept apart until the very last minute. When the bomb was ready to be exploded, these pieces were smashed together using a mechanism similar to a gun. One piece of uranium was shot down a smoothbore gun barrel and smashed into the other piece. The impact got the critical mass needed and generated the first nuclear explosion in warfare. Fat Man was the bomb detonated over Nagasaki. This used the less reactive plutonium-239. The gun method was deemed not strong enough to achieve the blast required. Fission would have started too early and the reaction would have been too slow for the bomb to reach a critical mass. The solution to this was a hollow sphere of subcritical plutonium found in the belly of the bomb. This was surrounded by conventional explosives. When this was set off, it created a huge implosion which increased the density of the plutonium when everything was smashed together. This allowed it to create a supercritical state. It's now easy to see how Oppenheimer described himself as a destroyer of worlds. The energy created by the two A-bombs at the end of the war was like nothing the planet had ever seen before. And it was all created by manipulating the most volatile materials that the scientist and his team could get their hands on. What do you think about Oppenheimer's bomb? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.